If you love Italian food, and I mean real Italian food. More? I mean more. Like they make in Italy, not little Italy. Mm. Back away. Then you don't want to miss this. We found the city's best lasagna. Can people understand how serious this is? Authentic Sicilian fare in Soho. I'm like rubbing all over your body, kid. And a gelato panino that made me go pazza. Plus, you like my balls? Where you can learn how to make fresh mozzarella. And we're road tripping with the city's top pizzaiolo, who's taking us to his favorite places outside the city. That's one of the best things I've eaten in a long time. Mommy, when New York starts right now. Tony and New York starts right now. has the largest population of Italian Americans in the country, so it's really no surprise that you can find authentic foods from Italy's various regions right here in New York. So today we are gonna take you on a culinary tour of the motherland and all you have to do is head below 14th Street. But before we get to all the fun of the food, let's get our facts straight. The largest wave of Italian immigration to the United States took place in the late 19th century and early 20th century. During that time, over five million Italians immigrated to the United States. Only the Irish and Germans came to America in larger numbers. The first New York City neighborhood to be settled by Italians, primarily from southern Italy and Sicily, was East Harlem, which became the first part of the city to be known as Little Italy. Italian Harlem approached its peak in the 1930s with over 100,000 Italian Americans living in its crowded, rundown apartments. By the 1930s, the largest concentration of Italian Americans could be found living in the Lower East Sides, Little Italy. And while we all love Little Italy, it's not the place to head to if you want the true, authentic flavors like you would find in the motherland. If you're looking for authentic Sicilian cuisine, you will find it just a few blocks west of Little Italy on Spring Street at Sullivan at one of my new favorite restaurants in the city. Piccola Cucina, translated it means little kitchen, is just that as it seats no more than a few dozen diners. Luigi, mm. ho fame. Ho fame, okay. I'm hungry. Preparo per te, I make for you. And Chef Luigi Centrullo is as charming as the space. Even though he hails from Puglia, Sicilian cuisine is what sets his culinary heart aflutter. And with a successful sister restaurant on Prince Street, it seems that authentic Sicilian food is what this neighborhood needed. Today I make the meatball with the caponata. This is the caponata with the fried eggplant. This is the meatball, polpetta della nonna. I make the swordfish roll. And the um, swordfish is uh, the swordfish, and uh, inside have the mozzarella, buffalo mozzarella, and the aromatic, uh, aromatic bread, and uh, with the lemon, the orange, for remember the Sicily. Chef doesn't think I should just shove my face in it. Pesce spada in tre, due, uno. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Luigi. You like? Yes. Mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> more. More? I need more. I make the fresh sardine on the grill with the bread inside the wild fennel. Yum. Yes. The with fennel? The, yeah. Finocchio. Finocchio, yes. Finocchio. Yes, yes. And I make the insalata, mm -hmm. the salad with the fennel and the orange. The very mm. typical dish in Sicily. And then you got to bring on the pasta, Luigi. Yes, the pasta I want to make for you, only for you. The <laughs> macaroni. Only for me. Yeah, macaroni al ferretto alla norma. Is the macaroni is the pasta with the tomato sauce and uh, the fried egg pan and the ricotta cheese on the top with the, the basil, the fresh basil. I think it's the good place. You think it's a yeah. good place? There's, but you're making yeah. me two pastas because one yes. pasta is not enough for me. And, I need uh, two. This is um, semi vegetarian pasta. I want to make the bucatini with the sardine, the yeah. very typical pasta from the Sicily. 
and uh, I serve with the fresh sardine and uh, pine nuts, uh, rising and uh, and the bread. Pine nuts, and raisins, yeah. and breadcrumbs. Yes. Yeah, and you the, do. The wild fennel. And, yes. And the wild fennel. The yes. wild, the wild finocchio. Yes, the wild finocchio. <laughs> yes. Put it in the plate, Luigi. Cosa? This is the bread. The bread crumbs. Yes. The crumbs of the bread. Crumbs. 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 And crumbs. Bread. <laughs> How do you say bread crumbs in Italian? Pane tostato. Pane tostato. So you just call it toasted bread. Yeah. But we call it crumbs. This is the fennel. All right, so my question to you, Luigi, is do people eat the pasta with their hands at your restaurant? Yes. This with the hands? Hands? No. No! With allora, the fork. With the fork. Please, the fork, please. Fran cue Francesca for the fork. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like the sea. Three, two, uno. I'm like, rub it all over your body good. Yes. <laughs> Piccolo Cucina, Piccola Cucina. They have one on Spring Street, they got one on Prince Street, a little bit different style. Yeah. But do yourself a favor, people, because this food is for real. Luigi, grazie tanto. Prego. Bacci, bacci. Mwah. Mwah. I'm just going to keep on eating. Now, if you have a sweet tooth and a soft spot for gelato, you will actually find the real deal in the heart of Little Italy at Mo Gelato, 178 Mulberry Street. And while they source their milk locally from upstate, it has the same fat ratio as the type used in Italian gelaterias, resulting in a taste that is true to the motherland. So if you crave authentic Italian flavors like stracciatella, zabaione, nocciola, bacio, or pistacchio siciliano, you will find them here. Owner Giacomo D'Alessandro can often be found making them in the back with this machine imported from Italy. And today he was preparing perhaps the best gelato I have ever tasted and I used to live in Florence, home of the legendary Vivoli. It's 80% dark chocolate from South America and 20% water, so technically it's a sorbetto and dairy free. And yes, you can get it in a cup, you can get it in a cone, but why would you want to do that when you can have it in something far more decadent? So what exactly is a panino gelato? We use this machine that is being done just to do the panino hot outside and cold inside. It will be completely blanket. Stop teasing the host, Giacomo, put it in. And the panino is ready. Let's do it like this. Oh, baby, baby. Got it. Baby, 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 Bob. See? Put in here a little bit of the forward power sugar on the top. The old gelato, hot panino gelato. Three, Let's do that. Two, one, two, one. Coming up, we are in search of legendary lasagna. We've got the goods on the best gnocchi, and we're hitting the road with an award-winning pizzaiolo who's treating us to the best pizza outside the city. Plus, you have to admit it, I've got some good-looking balls where you can learn to make your own fresh mozzarella.